the beloved prophet's life in mecca sallallahu alaihi wasallam the beloved prophet's life in mecca sallallahu alaihi wasallam the beloved prophet's life in mecca sallallahu alaihi wasallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim as salatu was salam alayka ya rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya habiballah as salatu was salam alayka ya nabiyallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya nurullah if you use the mudin channel in the previous episode we heard about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's journey of Mi'raj, which is from amongst his most prominent miracles that in a small part of the night, he Alayhi Salatu Wasallam traveled from Makkah Al-Mukarramah to Baytul Muqaddas and then ascended to the heavens. Now, how wonderful was that journey, SubhanAllah. In this episode, we are going to hear about the importance of the first and second pledges of Aqaba and also listen to how uh, these pledges proved to be helpful in the migration to Medina al Munawwarah. But before this, let's listen to an excellence of Salat al Nabi. The Prophet وسلم, said, Sayyiduna Jibreel وسلم, came to me and told me the good news that my Lord Allah جل, proclaims, I send mercy upon the person who recites Salat upon you, and I send salam upon the one who presents salam to you. Habib, Muhammad. History tells us that in almost every age, Islam went through migration. All Prophets السلام, migrated to raise the word of truth. From Sayyidina Adam السلام, till the final Prophet, all the Prophets endured the sufferings of migration. And in order to spread Islam, they left their hometowns. And through continuous struggles, they achieved success, confronted the evil people of their time, and challenged the evil forces. They shattered their evil intentions through their firm determination and promoted the truth. The help of Allah Almighty continued supporting them at every step and they went out of their houses with the message of Tawheed Oneness. The migration to Medina Munawwara was also a source of raising the word of truth. The migration to Medina is regarded as uh, the grand and foremost migration of Islam because of which the branches of the tree of Islam spread in such a way that they kept on spreading. The migration to Medina did not take place straight away. Rather, before this, the circumstances had become so unfavorable that the Prophet ﷺ gave the order of migration. Yes, that is the first pledge of Aqaba. And the second pledge of Aqaba, due to which he ﷺ decided to migrate to Medina. First, we will discuss the first pledge of Aqaba and then the second pledge of Aqaba so that we can learn what role these two historic pledges play in the migration towards al madinah al Munawwara. Now, dear viewers of Madhi Shal, before this, it's appropriate to discuss the condition of Medina, meaning what the circumstances of Medina were at the time of the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And in this way, it will be easy to understand the pledge and the migration to Medina al Munawwara. Now, the former name of Medina is Yathrib. When the Prophet ﷺ settled in this city, it was called Medina Tun Nabi, the city of the Prophet. Then this name was shortened and became famous as Medina. In terms of uh, its history, it's a very old city. When the Prophet ﷺ declared his prophethood, two Arab idol worshipping tribes, Aus and Khazraj, and some non Muslim people of the book would live in this city. The tribes of Aus and Khazraj would live together with great harmony and unity. But then there came a time where they would argue and fight over trivial matters. They would cause bloodshed. Hence, according to this nature of theirs, both the tribes began to fight. Now, even the last fight, which is known as the Battle of Buath in the history of Arabia, was so horrific and bloody that almost all the famous warriors of the tribes of Aus and Khazraj fought and were killed. And both the tribes became extremely weak. Now, after embracing Islam, by virtue of the sacred teachings and the training, the instruction of the Prophet wasallam, all the past conflicts of Aus and Khazraj came to an end. And both the tribes began to live together. They began to live with love and affection. 
This was the result of the good manners of Rasulullah and the teachings of Islam which eradicated racial discrimination and made these mortal enemies of one another brothers to one another. Now, if you before Islam, these were the circumstances of the inhabitants of Medina, which have just been stated. And Islam had still not reached Al Madinatul Munawwar. The Ansar were idol worshippers. But because of being acquainted with other non Muslim people of the book, the Ahlul Kitab, they knew that the final Prophet was about to arrive. So the Ansar and the people of the book were both waiting for the final Prophet. It was the 11th prophetic year. And as per normal, the Holy Prophet ﷺ went to present the invitation to Islam to the tribes who were coming to perform Hajj. The people of the tribe of Khazraj went to him ﷺ. So he ﷺ recited the verses of the Holy Quran and invited them to Islam. They became quite impressed. And while going back, they said to one another, He is the final Prophet ﷺ. We fear that the people of the book might embrace Islam before us. Saying this, all of them embraced Islam and went to Medina and invited their families as well as relatives to Islam. Thus, Islam had reached Medina. Similarly, in the next year, the following year, the 12th prophetic year, on the occasion of Hajj, 12 people from Medina hid in the valley of Mina and embraced Islam and pledged allegiance to the Holy Prophet ﷺ. This was their pledge. We will not associate anything with Allah Almighty. We will not commit theft, adultery, we will not murder our children, will not accuse anyone, will not disobey you regarding good deeds, and will obey the order of the Holy Prophet ﷺ in both states, i.e. poverty and ease, regardless of whether ourselves become pleased with it or dislike it. We will give priority to the Holy Prophet ﷺ over ourselves, and we will not argue with the one who runs the government. Wherever we are, we will speak the truth, and will not fear the criticism of any fault finder, regarding Allah Almighty. Dear viewers, we've heard about the unethical values, the traditions of ignorance which were prevalent amongst the Arabs. But Islam, Alhamdulillah, eliminated all these unethical actions and implemented high values. So this pledge was received for the high ethical traditions in which the highest and greatest point was not to associate anything with Allah Almighty. After they pledged allegiance, the Holy Prophet ﷺ gave them glad tidings, saying, if you fulfill this promise, there is paradise for you. After that, the people requested him to appoint a teacher to teach them the rulings of Islam. Hence, he والسلام, sent Sayyiduna Mus'ab bin Umair radiallahu an, to Medina with those people. In Medina, he stayed in the house of Sayyiduna As'ad bin Zurara radiallahu an. Sayyiduna Mus'ab bin Umair and Sayyiduna As'ad bin Zurara radiallahu anhuma began to go to each house of the Ansar and invite them to Islam. And thus, bit by bit, slowly, gradually, Islam spread throughout Medina, so much so that from Medina to Quba, every house was blessed with the honor of Islam. Now the chief of the tribe of Aus, Sayyiduna Sa'ad bin Mu'adh an, he was quite a brave and influential person. When Sayyiduna Mus'ab bin Umayr an, invited him to Islam, at first he expressed his hatred and aversion to Islam. But when Sayyiduna Mus'ab bin Umayr recited the Holy Quran to him, his heart softened. And he became so impressed that he gained the honor of embracing Islam. Now, as soon as he embraced Islam, his tribe also entered the fold of Islam. One year after the first pledge of Aqaba, i.e. in the 13th prophetic year, on the occasion of Hajj, about 72 people from Medina hid from their idol-worshipping fellows and pledged allegiance at the truthful hands of the Holy Prophet in the same valley of Mina and promised that they would present sacrifices to safeguard him السلام, and Islam. Dear viewers, when the Ansar were making this pledge of allegiance, the uncle of the Prophet السلام, Sayyiduna Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, who had not still embraced Islam, he ignited the Ansar's passion of honor. And he said, you're pledging allegiance, this is not an easy matter. Upon this, the Ansar, they became passionate and agreed to sacrifice everything and said, Ya Rasulullah if we remain steadfast in this promise, what will we gain? The Prophet ﷺ said, Paradise. Hearing this, everyone pledged allegiance at his blessed hand. Now, in Islamic history, this is called the second pledge of Aqaba. Now, after receiving the pledge of allegiance, the Holy Prophet ﷺ appointed 12 men of that group as the chiefs. 
And from those 12 men, nine were from the tribe of Khazraj, three were from the tribe of Aus. After that, all these people went to their camps. And when the Quraysh were informed about this pledge of allegiance in the morning, they wanted to arrest those who pledged allegiance. But they couldn't arrest anyone except Sayyiduna Sa'id bin Ubadah radiallahu anhu. Now whilst oppressing him radiallahu anhu, the Quraysh brought him to Makkah and imprisoned him. Later, on the basis of reconciliation, they released him radiallahu anhu and he safely returned. Their viewers, these were the two grand pledges of Islam. They occurred at a time when the Muslims were suffering from extreme poverty and hardship and were being afflicted with the oppression and cruelty of the disbelievers of Makkah. After these pledges, the Muslims gained shelter, and that shelter was the city of Medina. Then the path became easy for the Muslims, that they could avoid, they could finally avoid the agonies inflicted upon them by the Quraysh of Makkah, and they would migrate to Al-Madina al Munawwara. People began to migrate gradually. The first one to migrate to Medina was Sayyiduna Abu Salama radiallahu anhu. The Holy Prophet ﷺ had not been ordered to migrate by Allah Almighty at that time. Therefore, he ﷺ remained in Makkah al mukarramah When the Quraysh of Makkah learned about the migration of the Muslims, they started to stop them. But the people continued to migrate secretly until many of the Holy Companions reached al madinatul Munawwara, and only those remained in Makkah who were imprisoned by the disbelievers or were compelled out of destitution. The views, the migration was not only to leave Makkah al mukarramah and reach Medina, rather the migration was a great sacrifice. For the sake of Islam, they had to leave their hometown, their wealth, their property, their wives and children, and move all the way to al Madina al Munawwara. Indeed, it was a great sacrifice on their part. The companions who migrated are referred to as Muhajireen. Now, observing their sacrifice, Allah Almighty stated their virtues in the Holy Quran. In Surah An-Nahl of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, translation from Kanzul Iman, and to those who left their homes and families in Allah's cause, having been oppressed, we shall definitely give them a good place in the world. And the reward of the hereafter is indeed extremely great, had somehow people known. Sayyidina Qatada radiallahu anh states, this verse was revealed for the honorable companions of the Holy Prophet whom the people of Makkah oppressed very badly. And finally, they had to leave their home time for the sake of the religion of Islam. Some of them migrated to Abyssinia. Then from there, they reached Medina al munawwara And some directly migrated right to Medina al munawwara Allah Almighty praised them and declared their reward to be extremely great. From this verse, we learn that the holy companions who migrated have great virtues. Firstly, there is the promise of a great reward for them. And secondly, Allah Almighty Himself has testified to their migration being purely for the pleasure of Allah Almighty. From other verses of the Holy Quran too, we learn the virtues of the honorable companions who migrated. Hence, in one maqam, in one place, Allah Almighty proclaims, translation from Kanzul Iman, those who believed and migrated and fought with their wealth and their lives in the path of Allah, their rank is greater by Allah. And it is they who have reached their goals. Similarly, from a hadith to the virtues of the holy companions who migrated are manifest. And Sayyidina Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu anhu states, The holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to me, Do you know the group of my ummah who will be the first to enter paradise? I said, Allah Almighty and his prophet alayhi salam know best. The holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, On judgment day, the muhajireen will reach the door of paradise and desire to have it opened. So the God of Paradise will say to them, Has your accountability been completed? They will say, What will we be held accountable for? Whereas our swords were on our shoulders in the way of Allah Almighty until we died in that very same state. The Prophet ﷺ says, The door of Paradise will be open for them, so they will take a nap for 40 years before other people enter Paradise. Now when the disbelievers of Makkah observed that the Holy Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims uh, had gained supporters outside of Makkah, i.e. in Medina too, it was very unbearable for them. The disbelievers of Makkah held a grand conference in their Darun Nadwa, and it was such a huge gathering of the disbelievers of Makkah, in which not even a single uh, influential, uh, intellectual person of Makkah was absent. 
And in particular, Abu Sufyan, Abu Jahal, Utba, Jubair bin Mut'im, Nadar bin Harith, Abdul Bakhtari, Zam'a bin Aswad, Hakim ibn Hizam, Umayyah bin Khalaf, etc. All the chiefs of the Quraysh were present in this cabin. Satan the accursed also came. He had a blanket on him and he was in the form of an elderly person. He said, I am the Shaykh of Najd. Hearing this, they also allowed Shaytan, Satan, to join in their consultation. All the chiefs of the Quraysh began to make conspiracies against the Holy Prophet Abu al-Bakhtari said, confine him in a small room and give him food and water through a hole. Ma'adullah. Shaykh Najdi, meaning Shaytan, said, this is not a good suggestion. If the companions of Muhammad وسلم, learn about this, they will have him freed by risking their lives. Another chief said, expel him from Makkah al mukarramah so that he may live in another city. Shaykh Najdi, i.e. Satan, angrily said, May this suggestion of yours be cursed. Don't you know how sweet and attractive the speech of Muhammad وسلم, is? I swear by the Lord, if you expel him from the city, he will recite the Holy Quran to the people throughout Arabia and convert them to Islam. Abu Jahl said, I have a suggestion in my mind. A warrior from every tribe should stand uh, with a sword and murder Muhammad وسلم, all at once. Ma'adullah. In this way, every tribe will be responsible for the murder. And Banu Hashim, they're not so strong that they can confront all the tribes. Hearing this evil suggestion of Abu Jahl, Sheikh Najdi, i.e. Satan, jumped out of happiness and said, this is the perfect suggestion. Now all the attendees agreed on this, and the gathering of the disbelievers was over. While stating this conspiracy of the disbelievers, Allah Almighty proclaimed in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُوا بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُثْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْلُطُرُوكَ أَوْ يُخْرِجُوكَ وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ Translation from Kanzul Iman. And remember, O oh beloved, when the disbelievers were scheming against you to either imprison you or to assassinate you or to banish you, and they were scheming with their technique, and Allah was making His secret plan. And the secret plan of Allah is the best. Dear views, what was the secret plan of Allah Almighty? And how did he safeguard his beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam and ruin the entire scheme of the disbelievers? We will discuss this in the next episode, inshallah. And also the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam starts from here now. The migration to Medina is the greatest migration of Islam. It provides us great lessons of sacrifice, faithfulness, obedience, and trusting Allah Almighty in the most difficult circumstances. Until then, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to act upon what has been said. Amin Bijah in Nabil Amin Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. The beloved Prophet's life in Mecca Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The beloved Prophet's life in Mecca Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The beloved Prophet's life in Mecca Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.